is uh, Alex here from the Ingress team. He's here to talk about their new VPS feature that they've lovingly called Overclock. And um, there's some, should I tell him about the special surprise or do you guys want to tell him? Oh, it's part of the thing. It's part of the thing. Okay. There's a special surprise. I'll just tell you that. Um, and um, I just wanted to say I've had the honor to work with these guys a little bit recently and I'm, I'm really grateful to have them on stage. So, and uh, here we go. Take it away, Alex. <laughs> Is this going to work? Hello? You can hear me now. All right. Just my rock star. Just like my rock star days, yeah. <laughs> this is your rock star. <laughs> All right. Smooth. Good. Yep. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Alex Stam. Uh, I'm a developer on Ingress, which is uh, Niantic's very first game. Um, and I'm going to tell you about our brand new feature called Overclock, which is our, uh, like Phil said, our VR, uh, VPS AR feature. So I am a technical artist on Ingress. What is a technical artist? Um, for those not in the game industry, you might not know, but it is 50% UX design, 50% client engineer, and 50% artist. And for those mathematicians in the audience, you might know that is more than 100%. You should go be a tech artist, because we're all really awesome. And then uh, there's some, uh, some Ingress team members over there at our holiday party uh, on the right. So what's a day in the life of a tech artist? So it, it's a lot of, lot of things. It's, it's shaders, it's UI programming, it's VFX. I do the audio stuff, I, I implement animations, uh, you know, things from optimization and uh, UX flows and tools to make the game easier to develop. Like, there's all these things. Tech arts are really fun, to be honest. Um, but as a developer on Ingress, my actual goal is to make sure that Ingress is fun, make sure that Ingress looks good, that it actually functions, and plays, actually most importantly, plays as fast as possible, because English players are very, uh, they like speed. So what is Ingress? Um, there is a world out there that you can view through your scanner. It's full of exotic matter. There's portals that only can be viewed through, through your scanner. Um, there's things like the shapers, who are this, these dimensional beings that exist uh, on the other side of the portals. They speak their own glyph language. There's a vast world of, of just very cool stuff going on in Ingress. But on a more mechanical basis, basis it is uh, a capture the flag game. It is a capture the flag game that has existed for over a decade. Um, so not only is it Niantic's first location-based game, it's also Niantic's first original game, original IP, um, and in, it's territory control in the real world. Um, it is different, I would say, than other Niantic titles in that Ingress is very competitive. Um, there's not really a player versus, there is a player versus environment element, but it's all about that player versus player. Um, people are always, you know, I, I gotta go, you know, fight back over here, or like, I need to defend my spot over here. Um, and so the type of gameplay is very head to head, you could say. And so what do you do in Ingress? You hack portals to, to collect loot. You can capture enemy portals. Um, and then you basically create these giant fields in order to control large swaths of territory anywhere in the world. And you can kind of see with some of this picture, like some of these areas are, are areas taken over. Like this one, go, this one goes from Hawaii to like, you know, can't, uh, Vancouver and people just are crazy and like the, the type of competitive nature that they get um, playing this game. The other part of it is that Ingress is the tip of the spear for a lot of the new Niantic te technology that we're putting in our games. Um, we are a small and scrappy team over at Ingress, so like, we are always like, trying new things, like, does this work? Is this gonna work for our players? Um, and so at the end of the day, Niantic it does have a huge benefit being a technology company and a games company at the same time. So while we're on the forefront of, of new tech and, and new like, AR, new VPS and stuff, I get to be the one to implement it and actually put it in a game. How are players gonna react to this? Um, but really, most importantly, what is Ingress? Ingress has, is this massive global player community. It's all about the players. Um, it's this community that's lasted for over 10 years. It's you know, made up of a bunch of small uh, groups all over the world. There's you know, people like, in other cities. There's people in South America and, uh, and everywhere. Like Antarctica even has places you can go and play this game. Like, this is a very worldwide game. Um, but Ingress, to me, like a lot of other Niantic games, it's just a great excuse to go for a walk and explore. Um, and as you can see, 
you can make a lot of friends if you play Ingress. And yeah, this is my favorite slide just because this kind of shows like all the players, like you know, all these different cities, like different gr like groups, big and small, like um, like either planned events or like our players like sometimes make their own events. Like it is a very vibrant community, and um, this is really why Ingress has lasted for so long. Is just all the players, the players are just keep it uh, going, and they they really uh, make the game awesome. Another part of Ingress, and this is my art side talking, is uh, some of the players make really cool field art. Um, this might be hard to, to digest a little bit, but, but each vertice is actually a point of interest. And so some crazy group of players on the green team went and like actually walked the path to draw this bear. And I, you know, it took a long time, but like there's all this coordination, there's planning. You have to make sure the blues don't come and destroy your bear. Like, there's a lot of cool art stuff, and I, I highly recommend looking up like Ingress field art because I can I just lose hours just going through all the cool stuff players have done. It's one thing to draw it, but it's one thing to like walk a city to make a a, a piece of art. And then as for my Ingress story, um, you know I'm actually more of a console uh, PC player, and so I actually haven't really been much of a mobile player until I got into Ingress, um, and especially during COVID, I was. I, I don't know, a little bit sedentary, like COVID is tough to kind of get out of the house and stuff. Um, but with Ingress, I was able to you know, go for a walk. Uh, um, and then actually my girlfriend, she got really, really into it. And you know, we, we were going for walks and then the next day, I was like, okay, well we're having a little bit of fun playing Ingress. And then she shows me her phone and she, and she picks a green portal and she says, kill. And that's how I know that she was uh, She's looped into the game, and we have played every day since that moment. Um, but it's really cool because you know, like instead of like ordering pizza for delivery, like I'll just you know I'll do my ingress walk and I'll go pick up a pizza and save a little money and just kind of explore the area a little bit. Um, but it's just it's a it's it's an excuse to be go be healthy. It's a game that's tricking you into walking. And me as an avid gamer, I need to have some sort of game to trick me into being healthy. <laughs> okay, so um, cheating is not fun. Uh, spoofers do target ingress. It is a problem that we're very aware of, um, and it's something that we we you know tried been sol trying to solve uh, for a long time. Um, how do players spoof in ingress? They attack the enemy from home. They will go out and capture remote remote portals, even though they're like at their on the, their couch at home. You know, they'll multi make multiple accounts in order to farm items, um, and it kind of seems from the outside like, hey, you can just you know detect the person who's cheating, right? It should be easy. But the issue is actually all the false positives that we run into. Like, what's the difference between someone who does a GPS spoof and someone who just loses their signal for a couple minutes? Like, it kind of looks like the same thing. Um, and so it's really this cat and mouse game. Like, how, how do we, we're aware of the spoofers, how do we fight back against them? Um, but it is really a, a complex problem. And as for Niantic games, I'm gonna go on a limb and say that uh, spoofing impacts Ingress more than other Niantic games. Um, just because it's player versus player, it's that team versus team nature. It's the fact that there are these points of interest that you have to that you go to in, to play. Um, if you can imagine, like Call of Duty or Overwatch or something, like players will not uh, accept uh, like uh, cheaters in those games just because, you know, competitive games you want it to be competitive. Like for Ingress, that's really important. Um, maybe for other Niantic games, like you know, what do I care if some some guy spoofed over and got his Pikachu over here. I mean, it doesn't affect my gameplay. Um, but in Ingress, since because it's so competitive and team versus team, uh, people will uh, end up doing that. And so actually, this POI dependent gameplay um, is the thing that actually makes Ingress so unique, but also is the thing that makes it susceptible to this type of abuse. And just to put it in perspective, okay, so this is wholly unique to Ingress. So, Let's say me and seven friends all got together. We're planned out this big trip. We're like in remote, like Vancouver, Canada, and like we're going for a hiking trip. And we have to get all seven of us. And we got our kayaks. We're, we're paddling out to this remote island. And uh, we finally we get to the island. There's a big mountain, and at the top of the mountain is some point of interest. And so it's this great adventure. Like th that's really the, the memories that people make playing Ingress are these kinds of stories. But it feels a little bad when you know you, you go and do this awesome gameplay, but then as soon as you walk down the mountain, some dude on his couch is gonna like hack into your portal. It kind of doesn't want to make you do it again, to be honest. Um, and so, 
being aware of that is, is really something that, um, that uh, we want to try to make work on Ingress just because it's such a uh, unique, uh, Ingress is such a unique game to play that, um, yeah, we basically just want to be super aware of it. And just for the numbers, like cheating is, is the majority of our incoming support tickets. Um, and it is the number three cost on Ingress for is our user support tickets. So this is a very um, monetary problem as well. Okay, before I go into the cool AR stuff, I need a little bit of background on the glyph hack game on Ingress. So glyphs is this language that the shapers speak to you. All these glyphs have meaning. Um, and what the glyph hack game is, is effectively a memorization game. It's kind of like Simon says, you see what the glyph is and you need to repeat it. And a lot of the hardcore Ingress players, they know like this shape means this word, like this means all. To the, to the point that they even they recognize the sentences that um, appear when you play. Um, and yeah, you, got, you can sort of think of it, I don't know if anyone's seen Arrival. Um, it's kind of like that where like the aliens would like draw big spheres and like they could communicate that way. That's kind of what the shapers are doing. They're trying to communicate with shapes. Um, and this is like a small subsection of glyphs. But what's really cool about the glyph language is like you can just, you can, it's a language. You can make new, you can say new stuff. Um, and like one cool aspect of it is like you can pair these together to make new words. So like the word all is this circle. Then the word clear is just this line. And so clear all, it's a line with a circle. Easy. <laughs> You're all glyph speakers already. Okay, we're on to D. We actually found out in AR due to the 3D aspect of it these glyphs now have a different perspective. Like if you were to, let's say, walk over here, you might actually get a different glyph than if you were to like walk over here. Like that added perspective um, is, is basically the, uh, adding depth to that whole glyph language. Um, and at Niantic, our, whenever we make new features, we really wanna keep our pillars in mind. Um, and those things are like exercise, exploration, real world social, um, and I think it's a little bit tricky sometimes to do that with AR because you know it's all about the player community, like I said before. It's people who get together, who go on walks together, who explore new areas. Um, and so Overclock actually, I hope, uh, actually achieves all those pillars. So players can farm gear super fast with Overclock um, and actually get back to the fun stuff they want to do. So instead of kind of sitting there and you, you'll hack a portal, and English players might have to wait a few minutes and they kind of look at their phone and maybe they're not talking to their, their friend, but in this case, you just do your AR hack, overclock, and uh, in, a, in effect, you can, get, you can burn out your portal and get an insane amount of rewards. So what's actually happening, it's less time that people need to sit there on their phone and wait, but more time for players to actually do the fun parts, like go in and get a beer with your friend, or like, I don't know, go into a movie theater, like doing other stuff rather than just kind of uh, going through the motions, you could say. So in the vein of exercise, exploration, real world, real world social, we want to basically make something that uh, players can just get back to walking and doing the thing that Ingress is meant to do. Um, and then, okay, we're on the VPS. So this is our VPS feature. Um, it has been a lot of AR stuff in it before, uh, until now. But what's happening here is we're actually using VPS as a sort of like a two-factor authentication of the real world. It's essentially a second layer to tell our game that players are actually where they say they are. Um, I said before, like false positives is something that we worry about. And so actually when you can localize at the space and you know this is this place in the world, it's not just the GPS, but it's also the BPS. In that case, we might have an extra tool in our set to fight back against those GPS spoopers. And I, I want to say, like, I've been, you know, prototyping the VPS for a while. Like, there's a crazy amount of cool stuff you can do with it. And there's a lot of game stuff you can do with it. And so if anyone wants to talk to me about that after, I have cool ideas for you. Unfortunately, Ingress is a small team, so, like, I, we can't get to all of them. Um, but it's, oh, man, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, so it wasn't our, our original use case. Um, but using VPS for anti-cheat actually does sort of make sense for a multiplayer geolocation game such as Ingress. Okay, here, here, here's my, uh, the math part. So you can see uh, this is what a hypercube basically is. It's just like a 
3D cube that's attached by like some lines. Um, we actually did make a 4D hypercube and projected it into 3D, which is a lot of math. Um, and as a tech artist, I don't love math all the time, but when it, you make cool stuff, yeah, I'll, I'll take some math. Um, and yeah, so, and actually like our brains can sort of understand um, a 2D image versus a 3D image, but as soon as you get into the 4D realm, that's where you kind of start to, your brain starts to hurt and it's a little bit difficult to figure things out. All in the essence of getting a very difficult game out there for our players. Um, yeah, with the math, so rendering procedural objects in AR is very hard. Um, a lot of AR experiences might have like a mesh or texture models. Those things, you know, you can visualize them, you can see them. All of this is being rendered, like the math is all being done on the fly. So actually like we have to be in the game to even see the thing. Um, and so for us, it was very, very important for testing our AR stuff to make sure that it worked in editor. Um, if you wanna like quickly make AR experiences, you find a way to make your test in, in like Unity editor, for example, because it's gonna save you a lot of time. Um, but yeah, in effect, we, we built a 4D object and then uh, we use this like projected 3D perspective function that effectively lets it exist in 3D so that it can be viewed in AR. Uh, and yeah, so a 4D cube is actually a six-planed object, um, which, like I said, I, don't, I didn't want to get too crazy with the math, so we're just rotating like one of the degrees of freedom. And so, uh, you know, those who love linear algebra, come, t come find me afterwards, we have a good talk. And yeah, just the visualization to put your brain back into it, you got your 3D cube there on the left, you got your hypercube in the middle, and on the right, you got your hypercube that is animating just in one, um, on one rotation plane. And that's effective, effectively what we tried to make for Overclock. So here's a quick, uh, quick in progress look. Um, so first, the very first thing that players do is they calibrate to their environment. Uh, that's the VPS step. So players um, actually know, you can tell the game, that players are actually there. The other step is we'll attach this hypercube, this tesseract to an AR anchor, and that AR anchor is sort of like our source of truth. That's sort of all of our content's gonna kind of live on that AR anchor. And then another piece of this was uh, figuring out local versus global coordinate spaces. Um, I think most of you might be familiar in AR experiences with the global coordinate space where you can move a full object around, but 4D objects don't understand the global coordinate spaces. So <laughs> all of the animations that you see kind of folding in on itself um, that's all done locally, so uh, there's a little bit of um, projection, mapping, and, co and coordinate space math that had to be done to make sure this all worked like it should. A few other things in the in-progress look is that um, we ran also, I saw some talks earlier that people were talking about like visual, visualizing stuff outside, uh, and sometimes it's hard to see like if you want an AR experience but the sun's really bright, it's kind of tricky. Um, and so that was something that we really thought about. And I think our best solution to start um, was to sort of just create our own contrast. So you might see in the video here that we actually have this little like dark orb that appears behind the Tesseract. So even the player that wants to deploy the Tesseract in the sun, there's gonna be a dark spot <laughs> that lets them actually see the thing. Um, so we're trying to you know, keep in mind all those, com the, those common situations. And, Another thing you could do is, uh, you know, the actual AR camera texture that you get. Um, you can possibly reduce the, uh, like the brightness on it and make it a little more easier. I could imagine in a bright environment, you'd wanna make it darker so it's easier to see. Maybe in a dark environment, you wanna make it brighter so it's easier to see. Um, but l brightness and lighting issues are definitely one of the biggest actual UX, UX challenges. So uh, other, a few other optimizations, and this is just for the developers, but you know, making line renders, uh, reusing them for each uh, cube that we render. Uh, we are using really small particle VFX, maybe 10 particles uh, max for anything, and we are not using the update loop unless we are animating. Um, we really you know, try to take every millisecond that we possibly could uh, and tr try to make this experience at play out as fast as possible. So um, actually, yeah, I know Ingress has been here before um, at AWE, and um, before we kind of talked about the scanning feature, 
where um, you know players they go to portals and they they scan scan the area and uh, in effect um, they're doing these things in order to help us map the world. But like, what's the player incentive on on the other end? Why would they even do a scan in the first place? So um, that's where we come in. We build a game that is based on you know having successful scans here. And so again, Ninetic being at that advantage being a game studio and a platform company, they make a lot of these cool like scanning technologies. We put them in Ingress. Um, they, uh, you know, the VPS stuff is creating persistent AR experiences. Um, and I, it's really cool to be at a, at a place where basically all this, all this new technology exists, but there's all these new UX like processes to think about and like. How, how are we going to teach players the difference between scanning and then like doing a VPS scan? Like those uh, kind of those are like different um, movements you could say with your phone. And so all these players that have already done these scans now with Overclock are actually seeing the fruits of their labor and can now do an additional game um, uh, with those scans that they've already done. Um, and actually, like there's already there's tens of millions of, of scans players have done across 200 countries. So there's almost nowhere where there's not, you know, these scanned objects, and um, and so what, what's and there's also I think what was it 250 million people live within like five minutes of, of a VPS spot in any given location, so it's it's growing. And as for the player scans, yeah, it helps improve the player uh, ecosystem. So on the player side, they have more agency in order to make the game better. They I have the tools in order to upload their scans and then actually make Overclock work for them. And as developers, like I said, Ingress is a scrappy team, uh, we want to give players better tools to help improve their game. And I want to reiterate that. For Ingress players, it is their game. <laughs> it's not our game, <laughs> uh, and they will, and the, the end, which is awesome. OK, yeah, so we need your help, agents. Um, Go out and play Ingress. Uh, it, it's on the App Store today. Has been for a few years. Um, I would love to chat about y'all about um, just AR stuff and, and VPS stuff, especially on games, because oh man, there's so many cool games that are possible. Like, all these, pro I've done a bunch of prototyping, and like, there's a million things that I think are just now all of a sudden possible with VPS that just almost nobody's sort of aware of, except for those who are prototyping, um, and so. Please make more games that are AR. And then, yeah, test out our AR feature overclock. It, again, like I said, it shipped like 40 minutes ago, and uh, players are now experiencing it for the first time. And so the last thing, and most important thing, you must choose your faction. <laughs> are you enlightened? Are you the green team? Are you a frog? Or are you resistance? Are you the blue team? Are you a Smurf? Are you a winner? <laughs> and yeah, I just want to end on this slide because it's like, I mean, this is really what Ingress is all about. With all the tech, there's all this technology and there's all these cool things that we're doing and we're trying to engage players in new ways, but this is the engagement that we're looking for. We're looking for people just getting together and having fun together. And that's what, really what it's all about. That's it. So thank you, agents. Please take our survey with the QR code here. And I will hopefully see you at the talk about some AR games. Thanks, Alex.